I have a new opening speed run for you guys. This time I'm going to be covering the bird's opening. The bird's opening, unlike the hippo, is not named after an animal. It's named after an English chess player, Henry Bird, from the 1800s. And it's very simply defined. Very first move of the game, white plays f2 to f4 with a pawn, and that's defined as the bird. Now you see that move, we do cover d5 square, but on the other hand, maybe weakening the king a little bit, which means this opening has a bit of a double-edged reputation. Both sides get their attacking chances in. Leads to some pretty interesting play. This series, I'm gonna be demonstrating some typical plans, ideas, structures from the bird's opening that hopefully you can use in your own games. Playing the bird with white, that's first in the move at four. We're just gonna have some fun with the chess.com pools. Alrighty, the first game, Capital at Adam. The bird, f4. The nice thing about the bird for black is you can play pretty much everything against it. I'm gonna try a few different setups as white. Sometimes I'm gonna grab the center, sometimes I might fianchetto. But there's a lot of transpositions that might be playable. take this pawn. I want to go e5, but this time I'm going to take, go knight c3, pick up, pick up, pick up a tempo on the queen, so. Okay, you're being greedy here. You're looking at this pawn, huh? You know what? I dare you to take this pawn, Adam. I dare you. Yes, now you're up a pawn. But I have this move ready for you. Pawn to d4. Hitting the queen and increasing my lead in development. So that's good. It's a trade-off. Things are a trade-off. Adam won the first thing. You won the pawn. But I uh, didn't notice what I had planned. I think that was a good trade for me. I look back on it and... He might be like, take the queen. Nope, nope. I'm gonna give a check first, cause I'm that kind of guy. And then I'm gonna take the queen. Thank you, Adam, for the lady. We're up in development and up a queen. Great start. Now I'm just gonna castle, trade things off. Life is good, that's a good start. Check. Remember, you guys watch the hippo. What do we say? The bishop says hi. My bishops are saying hi all the time. And it worked out pretty well here. I'm gonna gobble that pawn. I think I'm gonna gobble this pawn with a bishop or the knight. I think the knight looks better. Because if I take with a the knight, then my queen can slide in. Well, I can't castle kingside, that'd be illegal. I don't want my queen to go here because of rook d8 gonna go queen f3 now I can queenside castle and I'm hitting c6 well thank you I'm gonna take this pawn with check now I'm gonna give another check my bishop is ready check Mm-hmm. I'll take this with check.
Yep. Bishop covers check. And now, is that checkmate? Yes, it is. The king can't move. Go me. Mur656. Six, six. Okay, okay. Good luck. E6. Pre move that pretty much too. Okay. I could play e4, but a lot of bird players, they kind of play like the Dutch defense. You go knight f3, and then you might Fianchetto. Whoa. This is deep. e6, and then e5. What happens if I gobble the pawn? Is this theory? Okay, I'm gonna move my knight back and ask you why you did that. Okay, I'm gonna take this as well. Thank you. Gonna move back. Okay. I'm up two pawns, but my opponent hasn't developed any pieces. Let's just Fianchetto and castle and uh, enjoy, just enjoy things. Okay. What if I attack your knight? That is a check. I could move my king over. You know what? I'm going to move my king over because I have... Uh, I want to bait my opponent. Yes, I want to bait them. They're going to go knight f2 check and I'm going to trap that bishop. A Venus flytrap. Do it. You're going to win my rook. Oh, doesn't even want to do it. Okay. In that case, let's hop on in with the knight, open up our bishop. I want to get my queen. Oh, this guy's aggressive. Jeez Louise. It's going to go h4. Okay, let's stop that. Attacking this guy, hey? But I'm going to attack this pawn. I'm going to be quite aggressive here. I'm going to go e4 and try to blow the position up. Because I don't think I'm getting checkmated. I think, what? I think black's in more trouble. Check. Yeah. Mur656, thank you for your cooperation. That looks like checkmate. Back to the bird. D5 is the main move. We'll go knight f3. Amor el ajedrez. All right, we will play the bird opening Dutch variation. I'm going to Fianchetto again. And castle. But I have the pawn on f4. That's the difference. Usually when you Fianchetto, your pawn's on f2. Therefore, you do have more control over e5, but your king might be weaker. A bit double-edged. Go for a quick, quick castle. Okay, looks like Black's getting ready to queenside castle. Going d3, I might want to go e4. Okay, that looks like a meet move. Let's take. Got the bishop pair. I want to keep the bishop pair, and I also want to open things up. But this might be an example of where things get a little risky. Because you'll notice the diagonal here. King is more open than usual. It's 
develop the knight. At the same time, white's super active. I can go here, I can go here. I like seeing this move because that blocks the bishop. And I'm threatening this, which you might miss. And now my bishop's very good. Gonna have to do it. Pin the queen. Don't see any salvation. Knight f3 check, I just take back with a rook. It's a good try though. That that's the pawn takes, it would pay off. So I actually respect the attempt. Sometimes it can be worth it. Not today though. Pooja's here. Well, well, well. Oof. A respect resignation. GG. First 100 points done. DHSS. DHS Smiley. Good luck. Whoa. All right. Going for my pawn, you know, if you're playing the bird, you can defend this pawn, e3, g3. But after one of my games earlier, I, I think I want to hang this pawn and bait my opponents. For development. It's, there's a price to be paid, and I'm willing to pay the price. I'm going to go pawn d4. I got two knights developed. I'm willing to do that. For the price of one pawn to get this... I'll take my, I'll take my chances. Now I'm going to go harass this queen. I'm going to start chasing the queen away. I spy the c7 square. So white has this big lead in development. The price of a pawn. Willing to take that. I'm going for forks. Oh, wow. You don't care. You don't care about my threats. Well, we're going to find out. Check. Take the rook. And the music. Music's delivering right now. Oof. Alrighty. Uh, we gotta watch out for this check. That's about it. Uh... I'm going to be boring, and I'm going to put my bishop back. I want to block this check. Boring, but effective, hopefully. We are up a rook. Lost a couple pawns, but... You know, a rook is, uh, is a pretty heavy piece of equipment. Okay. Let's offer a queen trade. Because we're up a rook. That knight might be trapped on a8. That's a concern, but worst case is I'll sacrifice it for a pawn. Boring, but effective. Because people don't want to trade when you're up uh, Rook. I 
And my opponent's taking their time. That's a good thing. Good habit. Hmm. Queen a3 is the only move that avoids the queen trade. What are they thinking about? Do they just go AFK? Do they just leave? Was that queen trade super effective? I'm playing a big 600 here. Maybe they're tilted. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. Queen a3, I was thinking about even going queen b3 and fully kicking the queen away. Like this. Now, then the queen has to go all the way here or all the way back, and my king will feel more comfortable. Back to the bird. We'll try different setups here. Most of them start with f4 and f3. Sometimes you can deviate. I'm not going to go g3 this game. I'm going to go d3. And the idea is to go e4 and try to build a center. But I don't know. That's a My opponent's playing the stone wall structure. That's a bit annoying, hey? Okay, I'll keep trying to get it. We got a stone wall. Okay. Uh, Okay, Alfie and Keto, because you're preventing me from playing e4 comfortably. Hey, no regret. Um, g5. You're gonna have to explain that to me, Chief. I got a knight, pawn, and bishop all hitting g5, and you have one defender. Math doesn't check out. I'm gonna take. Take with the piece that you haven't developed, which would be the bishop here, plus it's pinning. It's not the first time we played the bird and somebody's decided to just attack her king. Now what? Now what? go queen d2 get our queen off the back rank maybe i'll go rookie one and e4 what i just put queen d2 why would they go bishop h6 my bishop eats your bishop your rook eats my bishop my queen eats your rook i can live with that Okay, attacking my bishop now. They're trying to flag me. I gotta be careful. Are you trying to attack my king more? All right, let me go e6. And I don't want... This is defended, but I'm just gonna be... Let me think. It is defended, so I'll just take. It is defended. What am I worried about? Yeah. Swing the rook in. I'm up a piece. I'm ahead in development. Bishop can't move. Whoa! <laughs> Chad! Kingside castle. All right, all right. No fear. Happy to trade. Can I get some more trades? 
I'm up a uh, piece in a pond. Get the ladies off. Oh! Snip! My bishop's covering that. I'll take with a rook, keep the file open. I will trade. And now, let's just attack the king. Check. 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 We're going to invite everybody to the party. The night as well. Check. Check. Check, mate. Cameron, 0809. Good luck against the bird. Okay, okay. F4, F5, that's good energy. Let's try... Sometimes you can pair the bird with B3. A dark square Fianchetto, because the point of the F pawn is you're controlling E5. So you can play on the dark squares a little bit. It's a bit like a Nimzo sometimes. So I'm going to go for this setup. Instead of Fianchettoing, I'm going to put the bishop somewhere else. So maybe on b5. And I'm going to say this is my good bishop. Here. It matters that the knight's on c6. If the knight was on b8, this would look silly. Now we castle and I might go queen e1, queen g3. You transfer the queen over to the king side to coordinate with your bishop. Okay, I'm going to double these pawns. Structural advantage goes to white. And now I'm going to put my queen on g3. So that if this knight goes here, we have a headshot. Okay. That defends mate, but it does only weaken this diagonal even more. Let's go d3. I want to take away this option. I want to take everything. Nah. Let's centralize the knight. Now we have some squares. This is tempting. Look at this bishop. I think I see something. I could take this pawn and I'm going to live a good life. I'm going to be up a pawn. I'm going to get rid of their bishop. But I'm playing a bit like Emmanuel Lasker. And let's introduce a sacrifice that kind of developed at the start of the 20th century. Knight g6. And you guys are going to finish this. Oh, okay. Uh, my opponent prevented it. That's annoying. I was hoping they would take the knight so I could rook lift. But not today. Check. Oof. I had a nice combination set up. I don't see it. We still have our sniper here. And we're still up a piece and a pawn. But yeah, this bishop is looking very valuable. Put the rook on the open file. Target this. This knight's going to jump in on the dark squares. What we're hoping for is rook g8. That drops the soap. Immediately it's a bishop f6 check. Ah, you know, Krikor said a good comment. I actually looked at queen g8. Here, I calculated queen g8, rook g8, bishop f6, no mate. But I should have gone knight g8. 
Tai Chi A would have been nasty. Oof. Missed opportunity. I'm I'm not sharp. That that's a that's not nice. Alrighty, alrighty. I'll try to come up with something to make up for it. I do apologize. I'm not even gonna take this pawn. I'm gonna have to make up for it and find a nice checkmate. Because I missed, you know, we're trying to make it artistic here. Maybe queen h4, queen h7, checkmate. Come on, Cameron. I think he wants to go d4. I'm gonna play bishop b5 first. I bet you he wants to sacrifice his rook for my bishop. So yeah, I could tell. I could tell Cameron. This bishop is worth everything to me. There we go. Good game. This game is for 600. Knight h6 is new to me from Crackerjack. What's the knight doing there, huh? I'm gonna go knight here. We're gonna go fishing. Experimental. I wanna go queen h5 check. What I want to play is probably b3 in the future. Okay, oh, ooh. Takes. Whoa, what was this? d4, I captured, my opponent played e5. Hmm. Looks like another pawn for me. Thank you very much. And now this is the point. There's a knight on h6. I'm gonna go queen. Queen h5 check. And I'm going to ask where you're going to go. Because if you go g6, your knight hangs. You can go there. That's a good move. I was just hoping for a blunder. I was fishing. I'm going to go fishing again. Fishing for e8. I'm hoping my opponent goes queen d4. Well, now. Knight g4 um, has an issue. Does anyone see the issue with knight g4? My queen and my knight are converging on a few squares. I see a big issue. Double check that nothing's hanging. Nope. Works for me. Well, you're one step closer to mastering the bird's opening. To move on to the next episode, just click over here. And to stay up to date with all of our content, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also click the bell button then you're going to get notified. See you next time.